Hello, Dave from Gondwana here, Edinburgh. E678, advice on lighting. How to light it, how to get no smoke into the room, which is uh, one of the main things that people uh, contact us about. It is a little bit harder to light than a conventional stove, but with a little bit of thought, uh, it's not the end of the world. We're gonna show you, a lot of people say, oh my, it smokes back into the room a little bit or out of here. Most of the times, how you're lighting it, we do recommend that you top, top burn, which basically means we're starting the fire on the top and burning down. A lot of people talk about cold plugs, things not working. This particular appliance is bad for cold plugging. We have a lot of oak trees at the back there. We end up with a lot of low pressure. Things don't work terribly well. If you know how to find a cold plug, you generally know because as soon as you light it, all the smoke pours into the room. But if you're not sure if you have one and your appliance is really susceptible to it, uh, there's easy ways to check without using draft gauges or anything fancy. I've got incense here, which you can see. The incense will tell you basically take one of your ports out the back, clear the class with the, the, the rear cleaning one, put your incense to it, and you'll quickly see that the gases just pull straight across there and go up the chimney. The other way to do it, and the easier way to do it, is a match. <clears throat> Get your match going nicely, take it closer, and you can see it disappearing and pulling up the chimney. Eventually, it'll just go out like so. So, we've got a good draft. So we don't have a problem with a cold plug or anything like that. So then what we're going to do, we're going to pop our bung back in. It should also be said to make sure that there's no bird's nests. There's another reason why you can have smoke entering the room. Uh, beehives, so it's daft, but it does happen. And what that does is block it or partially blocks it and stops the gases basically from going up. Before you're lighting your, your, your eco stove or any other masonry heater, to be honest, uh, they all work pretty much exactly the same way. If you have a dampener on your masonry heater, make sure that's open when you initially light it. And as it gets going, you can slightly turn that down. And what that does is then forces the, the gases to go through the channels that's supposed to. This heater, as you can see in here, we've got wood along the bottom there. We've tested our logs. They're below 20% moisture. Very important. Split the log. Test the centre of the log, not the ends. So obviously the ends could tell you it's been quite wet if it's been raining and they've had a little bit of shower. Over the ends are going to tell you false readings, it's 30-40% even though you've had them for four years. So remember, split the logs, test the centres. Go overkill and there we your kindling. You can't have enough to kindling, okay? Plenty kindling. After that we're going to look in. If this is the first kind of time you're going to use it of the year, look at your baffle. Your baffle should be quite tight, there's only going to be a little bit of play on that. There's a rope up here. And what that rope does is it basically stops the gases from getting sucked from here and going through there. What we want to do is we want to make the gases go to the back of the heater, through the plate there. Then they're going to come up to the top here, down here, along the bottom, and back up before going out the chimney. And it's going to do exactly the same thing on both sides. Okay? Another thing, make sure your bungs along the bottom are clean. You've got your brush that your manufacturer gave you, sweep those channels down. Get the hoover in there and get everything nice and clean in the firebox what we've got is we've got about four or five logs oak in this case and then on top of that we've got uh, some pine kindling uh, pallets basically untreated uh, split bone dry under 10 percent moisture they're going to burn really really easily on top of that we've got a couple of little fire lighters in the back there we're not using paper we're not using cardboard we're not using the yellow pages flyers for the takeaway along the road we're going to use fire lighters because what we want to do is we want to create lots and lots of heat really, really quickly. This is Tiger. Matches, blow torches, anything you like. I should also be said that if you do have a cold plug, the easiest way to clear your cold plug is from the rear port of the heater or any kind of heater. Basically, stick your hair dryer in there or a blow torch. Hair dryer is safer. If you do use a blow torch, look inside, make sure there's no tar or anything like that the tar is obviously going to ignite. You're only going to get tar if you're not burning properly, but we have seen tar in here, we have actually seen these heaters internally go on fire, uh, which is impossible. So a hair dryer is a safe thing, and then you can only do your match test again at the back, next to it, is it pulling the match, is it pulling it out, then you've got a good enough draw, and you can light your heater. Otherwise, why is it not drawing? If you've used your hair dryer for five minutes and it's still not working, then you need to address why it's not working. Is the cull blocked? Again, bird's nests, or these sorts of things. Is there a hurricane outside? Things like that. So we're going to light the stove. We're just going to use matches. We're going to use stuff that you guys use at home. Nothing fancy, we're not using blow torches. Got our match, got our match going. 
You might find it quite hard to light that fire lighter in the back there, purely because, as you can see, the match is getting pulled. So we're going to light it like so. It should be said that at this time, down here, is completely closed. As you can see, that's the fire lighter lit in there. The fire lighter is great because it doesn't create a lot of smoke. It just burns nice and hot. Okay, and we've got our door. We're going to put our door, we're going to put a catch to there. And then I'm going to close my door to here. That's going to leave about a finger's width gap on the side of the door. What that's going to do is going to add lots of air through the fire chamber and push basically that flame and all those hot parts, if you like, up and into the chimney. And it's going to work its way down through the heater along the bottom and out the top. And that's going to get the things going really, really quickly. It's what we want is lots and lots of heat. It's going to catch that kindling and then it's going to work and burn the kindling from the top down. The kindling is going to fall between these hardwood logs. We haven't got any pine in there or any softwood, or normal wood, because it's easier to burn and get going initially. But I thought I'd try it in the hardest case scenario, just to prove that how things work. As you can see, we're not getting any smoke in rooms or anything like this. Everything's going out the back where it's, where it's supposed to do. We've only got two fire lighters in there. I'd recommend four or five, but for some reason we've been giving too many boxes away. I went a little bit shy on them today, so we've only got two. It's going to take anywhere for about 10 to 15 minutes before I shut that door. At the moment, when I've got that door shut at that place, I'm going to open the ash clamp, about 10 to 15 mil at the bottom, and that's it. Then what you're going to do, go make yourself a cup of tea or whatever, uh, and, and, and wait for it to get going properly. When it gets going properly, all that pine is going to become, well, jumping away, it's going to be snapping, it's going to be crackling, and it's going to start working its way down. We tend to close this door after about 10 minutes approximately. Should be noted that you should be keeping an eye on the fire during this period. Don't leave the door wide open either. Any sparks are going to come into the room. Uh, and basically just wait for it to catch. Once it's catching properly and roaring away for a long period of time, then what we're going to do is we're going to slowly increase this in. This, this heater, should be noted, is completely room temperature. It's cold. So it's going to take a little while to get things going properly. Okay, so we'll get back to you in 10 minutes. Okay, another five, ten minutes just lapsed there. The fire's gone away really, really well. It's got the oak well and truly caught on fire. So what we're going to do is we're going to start and shut this. We're going to shut it just so it's just about fully shut. As you can see, shut it fully. Things calm down. We're not quite at that stage where we shut the air off completely. Remember, this heater has air coming in from the back. So this, the, this particular one here, it gets added in here, but it's only realistically for lighting. And when you need to get things going a little bit more. Most of the time your air should be drawn in through the back, which is a hole which is exactly the right size for the exactly the right amount of air for perfect combustion. You've also got air coming in from here, which is coming down over the glass to try and keep the glass clean, as well as adding more air into the firebox. So as I say, we're going to close that, just so it's got a little gap there. And that's you done. Everything's working, everything's fine. Doing its thing. Any questions? Let me know.